Cat Sim TV. Hey everybody, Cat Sim TV, and it's Pi Day 2023. We're going to explore some of the musical possibilities of Pi, focusing on time and timbre. But first, please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. We all know how to divide notes by two, three, four, five, or smaller subdivisions. But what happens if we want to subdivide using pi? Triplets, quintuplets, even divisions of 17 will always eventually line up. But recall that pi is transcendental and cannot be expressed as a ratio of integers. So if we subdivide a note by pi into pi tuplets, they will take up slightly less space than triplets, but never line up with the subsequent notes. We will have a rhythm that is always off the beat, which opens up some interesting possibilities. Many composers have experimented with irrational and transcendental meters and subdivisions. Among the more well-known examples can be found Conlon Nankaro's Studies for Player Piano. Study 40A uses the ratio of the transcendental constant E over pi, yielding incredibly complex and unplayable textures. For our own explorations of pi-based rhythms, we will start simple using the UTRP Music Programming Library for the functional programming language Haskell, we can define an infinite stream of half notes on C, G, and the C an octave above. From these streams, we can create new streams that are subdivisions of two, or subdivisions of pi. We convert these streams into MIDI files that we can import into Ableton Live. Here we see the half note stream, the quarter note stream at double the rate, and the streams at pi times the half note. We'll play them using this preset on Arturia CMIV. Here is the half note pulse on C. Now bring in the quarter note on G. Pretty straightforward. Now take out the quarter notes and bring in the pi notes on G. A more complex rhythm that never lines up, although it comes close on occasion. Let's switch to the pi notes on C an octave above. Bring back the quarter notes on G. We now have an interesting, complex, and ever-changing rhythm that can be the basis for a new composition. But let's switch gears and look at Pi and Timbre. In a sense, we can see Timbre as just rhythm at a very high speed. Take this LFO-based rhythm. As we speed it up, it gets faster. Until at some point we stop hearing the separate events and they blend into a continuous sound. Rhythm has become timbre. Many natural and synthetic sounds can be described as a sum of harmonics, or sine waves whose frequencies are integer multiples of the fundamental. They are quite analogous to the duplets, triplets, and quintuplets that we saw earlier. But what if we change the harmonics to be multiples of pi, or the square root of pi? We can try this out using the instrument Signs from Cherry Audio, which allows us to combine up to four sine waves. If we use sine one as the fundamental, we can set up the remaining three to be ratios of two, three, and four. Note that the frequencies here are expressed in terms of organ feet and semitones. So we have eight feet, eight feet, 12 semitones, and four feet. It's a pleasant, organ-like sound. Now let's change the frequency ratios of sines 2, 3, and 4 to be the square root of pi 
pi and pi times the square root of pi respectively. First, we can use this formula to convert the ratios to the octaves, semitones, and cents that are used in most digital synthesizers. We set the frequency of the sine waves accordingly. And this is the resulting sound. Because the ratios are not integers, and indeed transcendental, we get a more inharmonic sound, which has a very interesting quality. Here is a save preset that uses these frequency ratios along with a sculpted envelope to give it more articulation. Now we can switch our MIDI tracks in Ableton Live to use this new patch in Signs. pretty cool pattern going. Let's add something more melodic on top. First, let's create another sound using the ratios of the square root of pi, this time in Arturia's Synclavier V. Here we can do more partials. Let's set up the square root of pi on partial 2, once again expressed in semitones and cents. Now pi on partial 3, pi times its square root on partial 4, and pi squared on partial 5. Pretty cool. And not surprisingly, it sounds quite similar to what we created on signs. Let's do a little shaping of each partial's envelope to get a nice musical sound. Now we go back to Haskell and Uterpy to create our melody line algorithmically. We'll take a simple Mixolydian mode line. Create its inverse, retrograde, and inverse retrograde variations. And now we'll create a data structure with a cycle of these variations, followed by a cycle of the various ratios of pi and the square root of pi. Now we can map the ratios onto the notes segments to create ever-changing time variations in ratios of the square root of pi. Functional languages are particularly well suited to this sort of thing. We can bring the resulting MIDI file into our Ableton Live project and then assign it to be played using our Synclavier sound. Nice. Now let's put it all together to create our full pie-based composition. We'll add in a little spring reverb and tape delay for good measure.
And there you have it. If you have any thoughts about Pi or its musical possibilities, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.